Okay, we're picking up where we left off in the last video and we're going to talk about some blob brush settings. So I'm using a Wacom tablet and that allows me to use pressure sensitivity. So we're going to talk about that with these settings. And I've got two calligraphic brushes here that I'm using in the brushes panel. Let me get the blob brush. The shortcut is shift B and I have this really tiny one selected here. So I'll just paint a stroke so you can see that. Then I can switch over here to this two point brush and show you what that looks like. So we're really zoomed in on this artwork. Now calligraphic brushes are the only brush type in Illustrator that you can use with the blob brush tool. Every brush type in the brushes panel is really meant to be used with the paintbrush tool. The calligraphic brushes also work with the blob brush. And the reason I use these is so that I can change my brush settings just with one click here and work with my saved brushes. Now, if we go to the blob brush settings, and I'm just going to double click the blob brush in the tool panel to get its options dialog box. In the last video, we talked about these two check boxes and my smoothing setting here. Down below, we have all of these settings that determine the size and the shape and the angle of your blob brush. So typically, if you're using this tool, you would just come in here and create all of these settings. The problem is that if you had to keep going back and forth to that panel to set the settings, it might take you a little more time and you might not remember exactly what you had before. So that's why it's really helpful with this tool to use calligraphic brushes. So let me go ahead and delete these stray strokes here. And then I'll just show you what I have set here. So we'll start with this two point brush and I'll show you how this works. So when you create a brush, and first of all, let me go back and cancel out of here. To create a calligraphic brush in Illustrator, you're just going to click on the new brush button at the bottom of the brushes panel and choose calligraphic brush and then click OK. All right, I'm gonna cancel so we can go back and just see the settings that I've already set. So first thing you wanna do is give your brush a descriptive name so you can find it easier later and then the property down here at the bottom, the size of the brush is the one that I'm using uh, to control with pressure sensitivity on my Wacom tablet. So if I look in here in this menu here, you can see we can control each of these three properties in the brush using either fixed, random, or pressure. So the size of this brush is being controlled by my pressure on the tablet. And I've determined that at average pressure, this is going to be a two point brush. That's the size of it. And then it can vary in either direction by eight tenths of a point. I got very specific there. And there's a diagram here that shows you this right now. These are really super small. So let me go ahead and just bump this up so you can really see the variation in pressure here. So let's say this was a 32 point brush and my variation, let's make this a lot more obvious. So this middle circle here represents your average pressure, 32 points. And then when you use your heaviest pressure, it's going to go up by an additional 13 points. When you use your lightest pressure, it's going to go down by 13 points. So that's how pressure sensitivity with these brushes works. Now I'm going to change this back to my original setting so I can save that. As far as roundness goes, it's 100% round. It's just a circular tip and I'm going to leave it that way. And so that's a fixed number that doesn't change according to pressure or randomness. And then the angle, there's no angle in this case because this is a perfectly round brush. So I'm leaving that at zero and fixed. I'll just click OK. So just to show you, I'm just going to draw with this a little bit. So there's barely any taper. I'd have to press really hard to get a little bit of tapering out of this and it's just mostly a very round ended brush. All right, let me go back and now let's go look at this other brush, the super fine brush. Now this one, I have it set at an angle. So you can, you can actually work with this diagram here, just changing the, the roundness and changing the angle of the brush here by using, by just turning it like this. This intensifies that tapering effect. You can use this to make a little bit of a chisel point out of your brush. Say if you wanted to really make this flat 
and put this at an angle, like a 45 degree angle. So these first two settings here control the shape of the brush. And then again, the size, just like my last brush here, has pressure sensitivity and a bit of variation here. All right, so I'm going to cancel out of here because I don't want to save my angle and roundness. So this is how this brush looks. A little more tapering, an angle of 120 degrees, and 90% round. Now, when you're using the blob brush, and I've got this small brush chosen here, you also can use the left and right bracket keys that you're used to using with other brushes. So if I use the right bracket key, I can make my brush larger. If I use the left bracket key, I can make my brush smaller, like that. And then if I wanna go back to the original settings of this brush, I just need to click on it once, and then I'm back to its original setting. So creating calligraphic brushes to use with the blob brush tool is a great way to work faster with a variety of sizes and settings.